Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan is coming to us soon. Ramadan is a month of forgiveness, ibadah, worship, and a month in which a person draws closer to his Lord. And it was narrated by the companions that some of them, they would supplicate to Allah six months beforehand so that they would reach the month of Ramadan. By saying, Allahumma billighna Ramadan, oh Allah, allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. And as you all know, Ramadan is a month of good deeds, charity, prayer, visiting the sick. All of these things are from the actions of Iman and better ones, Islam. So inshallah ta'ala, let us prepare for this blessed month. And let us not forget the masjid's appeal. We need a new place. The community and the dawah is growing. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, we are in need of your efforts and your donations. So let us not forget the true investment, the investment of the afterlife. And as you all know the narration, then bana lillahi masjid and bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whosoever builds a house for Allah, i.e. for his worship, a mosque, then Allah will build for him a house in paradise. Who's to say this can't be our last Ramadan? So let us work hard collectively in trying to establish a masjid and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Barakallah. <laughs> وأقرضوا الله قرضا حسنا يضاعف لهم ولهم أجر كريم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين. This is the second session that we're having here at Masjid al-Sunnah al-Nabawiya in Philadelphia. As relates to the signs of the hour, and more specifically, the Dajjal. Yesterday, we began this topic and we mentioned the mention of the Dajjal in the books of the scholars of the Salaf. The 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th century. Likewise, we mentioned why was he called the Dajjal and Al-Masih al-Dajjal. And likewise, we mentioned some of his description. And likewise, we mentioned some of his actions. And today, we will continue with some of his actions. We will also mention some issues uh, that individuals may consider to be a conflict or misunderstanding. We will also mention the fact, the places that he cannot enter, the places that he cannot enter. We will also mention, bi ta'ala, his followers, some of his followers. We will also mention by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, what an individual should do to protect themselves from the Dajjal. And bi ta'ala, we will close with a mention of his destruction. How will his affair end? By the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, as it relates to his actions, we mentioned yesterday and from the last that we will mention because of time, because there's yesterday we, we had free reign because there was no lecture after our lecture. We had the last lecture yesterday, but today there's a lecture after, so we will summarize to the best of our ability. It was mentioned in Sahil Bukhari in the, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and like we did yesterday, some of these narrations, if they're long, we will translate them directly to preserve time. 
Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, or Abu Sa'id said, one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a long narration about the Dajjal. And that was an example of how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam extensively sat with the Sahaba and warned them. So Abu Sa'id said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day spoke for a very long time about the Dajjal. And from that which he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that the Dajjal will come and he will be forbidden to pass by the mountains of al Medina. And if anyone has visited al Medina, the mountain, Medina is surrounded by mountains. So if an individual passes those mountains, then they enter into the city. So he is not able to pass those mountains because if he does so, that means he would enter into the city and he is not allowed to enter into the city as we see in this narration and the coming narrations. So he sets up camp. This is Abu Sa'id al-Khudri informing that the Prophet Sallallahu said, so he sets up camp outside of the area of Medina. And a man will approach him. And on that day, this man would be the best of the people, meaning he's a believer. This man is from the believers. And he will say, I testify that you are the Dajjal who the Prophet ﷺ has informed us about. I testify you are that individual. You are that man. The Dajjal would say, to his audience, his followers. If I kill this man and then bring him back to life, will you doubt me? And they will reply, no. They are his followers. They are the individuals that believe in him. And then the Dajjal will kill this man and then he will bring him back to life. And the man will say, I swear by Allah, I recognize you even more now. I recognize you even more now. Then the Dajjal would try to kill him again because he has rejected him. And this time, Allah does not allow the Dajjal to kill him. This time, Allah Azawajal does not allow the Dajjal to kill him. And the scholars mentioned that's an indication of his batil. Yani there will come a time when the believers approach him or if, an, if a believer approaches him, he will not be able to kill him a second time. So Allah Azawajal proves to his people and his followers that he is not Allah. Because remember, he claims to be Allah. He claims to be our Lord. So that time he would not be able to kill him. There's an issue. There's an issue. This is one of the issues that we would like to discuss in brief. And that was one of the questions yesterday. Someone asked me a question. Are these uh, unprecedented actions or miraculous actions of the Dajjal, are these illusions are these illusions or is it a reality? Him killing someone, bringing them back to life, him ordering the sky to rain, ordering the crops to sprout, is it an illusion or is it a reality? Imam Hafid ibn Kathir, Imam Hafid ibn Kathir in his, and this is important that we understand this, Imam Hafid ibn Kathir in al Bidai wa Nihaya, he mentions this issue. And we're referring to this issue and the ones we mentioned yesterday. Hafid ibn Kathir mentions this. And he said, there's a hadith that some of the scholars of the Salaf used to support the fact that it's illusions and it's not a reality. That hadith yesterday, my dear brothers and sisters, was the hadith of Hudayfa 
Ibn al-Yaman radiya Allah ta'ala anhuma, and you possibly recall it, where he said he has paradise and he has hell and he has rivers. You brothers remember that? And one river is paradise and the other river is hell. In that narration, it was mentioned based on a person's perception. It was mentioned based on someone's perception. So Imam Hafiz Ibn Kathir said, some of the scholars of the Salaf felt that it's an illusion. And from them, and this is why we should know it, Imam al-Tahawi and Ibn Hazm. Imam al-Tahawi, from the, from the great scholars of the Salaf, and Ibn Hazm, also from the scholars of the Salaf, and others, they were of the opinion that it's only deception. They were of the opinion that it is only deception. Then he mentions, then Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned, and then you have individuals that totally deny all of the hadith about the, about the Dajjal. From amongst the Jahmiyyah and the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila. The Jahmiyyah and the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila, they refuse all of the narrations about the Dajjal. And because of that, you recall yesterday that we began with mentioning the Dajjal from the books of the Salaf, the books of Aqidah, the books of Tawheed, and the likes. The reason, one of the reasons why the Salaf put that in their books was to refute the Jahmiyyah and to refute the Mu'tazila, and to refute the Khawarij. That was one of the reasons why they put it in their books of Aqidah, because the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiyyah, and the Khawarij, they, ref they refuse all of those ahadith. They refuse all of those ahadith. Then, Hafidh ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِي يَظْهَرْ مِنَ الْأَحَدِيثَ الْمُتَقَدِّمَةِ أَنَّ الدَّجَّالِ يَمْتَحِنَ اللَّهُ بِهِ إِبَادَهُ بِمَا يَخْلُقُهُ مَعْهُ مَنَ الْخَوَارِقَ الْمُشَاهِدَ فِي زَمَانِهِ Ibn Kathir رحمه الله تعالى said, he concluded by saying, what is apparent from all of their narrations about the Dajjal is that those actions are reality. And it is a test from Allah for his servants. So Hafiz Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala was from the scholars that were of the opinion and many more. He was from the scholars that were of the opinion. No, these actions of the Dajjal, unprecedented actions, pointing at the sky, ordering the sky to rain, ordering the, scrop, the crops to sprout, killing an individual and bringing him back alive. Those are actual actions that he, Allah Azza wa Jal gives him the ability to do as a test for the creation. As a test for the creation. And Hafiz Rahim Allah Ta'ala, Ibn Kathir, concluded by saying, This is not a deception. This is not a deception or an illusion. It is not illusion. بَلْ هُوَ حَقِيقَةٌ It is a reality that Allah Azza wa Jal is testing His servants. فِي ذَلِكَ zaman During that time. فَيُدِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا يَكْفُرُ الْمُرْتَابُونَ وَيَزْدَادُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا He said, so many people will be led astray and others will be guided. Those who will be led astray are the people with doubt and those who have faith will increase in their faith. And those who have faith, they will increase in their faith. That was one of the issues that we wanted to discuss. Let's continue. From the places, from the places that the Dajjal would not be able to enter is Mecca and Medina. Is Mecca and Al-Medina. It's reported 
in Sahih Muslim. On the authority of Fatima bint Qais, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the Prophet wasallam said to the Sahaba, when he was mentioning the story of Tamim, al-Dari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this story, by the way, before we mention the part, remember yesterday we mentioned that one of the things that the believers, amongst the many, but one of the things that the believers benefit from the ashrat is sa'a, from the signs of the last day, is that it makes you firm in your belief. Do you recall we mentioned that? It makes an individual firm in their belief. Because when it occurs, the believers realize this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ informed us. Just like that individual in the hadith of Hudayfa that goes up to the Dajjal, right? And the Dajjal kills him and then he brings him back alive. He said, now I'm even more firm that you're the Dajjal. So it increased him in, in firmness. But in this hadith of Fatima bin Qais, when the Prophet, the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the beginning of the hadith, when Tamim al-Dari and other sahaba came and told the Prophet wasallam that the long story that they went to an island and the likes of that. When the Prophet wasallam got on the minbar and began to speak about the story of Tamim, the Prophet wasallam said, I am happy that Tamim came with this story because it supports what I was always teaching you. So the Prophet wasallam showed the Sahaba and expressed his happiness that one of the companions actually witnessed it. And came back to tell the story. So in that, in the beginning of this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, I'm happy. I'm amazed that Tamim has come with this narration because it supports what I was always telling you. So this is an example of the, of the Prophet ﷺ being happy because of the story. At any rate, going back to what we said, that the Dajjal would not be able to enter Mecca and Medina. In that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that Tamim, when they met the Dajjal, the Dajjal spoke to them. And what did the Dajjal say? From what he said, he said, Inni an al Masih, I am al Masih. Wa inni ushiku an yu'adhan li fi khuruj. And my time of appearing is close. My time of appearing is close. فَأَسِيرُ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَلَا أَدْعَى قَرْيَةً إِلَّا حَبَطُّهَا فِي أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً I will go throughout the earth. Now this is the Dajjal himself speaking to the companions that saw him. He said, I will go throughout the earth and there will not be a village except that I will enter it. And I will do it in 40 days. Then he says, غَيْرَ مَكَّةً except Mecca and Medina. He told them, except Mecca and Medina. Then he said the reason. I cannot enter those cities. I'm forbidden from entering those cities. But then he expresses that he tries. He says, Kullama aradtu and adkhula wahidatan aw wahida minhuma istaqbalani malak bi yadihi saif saltan yusuddni anha he said every time i try to enter one of those cities i am approached by an angel holding a sword in his hand he prevents me from entering those cities Every corner of those cities is guarded by an angel protecting it from me entering that city. So that's one narration. You also have another narration reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed on the authority of Junada bin Abi Umayyah that the Prophet ﷺ said, 
انظركم المسيح الدجال I warn you of the Messiah الدجال the prophet said it twice I warn you of the Messiah الدجال then the prophet said he is a man with a blind eye he will dwell throughout the earth for 40 days he will have with him a mountain of bread or food he will have rivers his authority will spread throughout the earth. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يأتي أربعة مساجد. He cannot enter four masjids. He cannot enter four masjids. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, المسجد الحرام والمسجد الأقصى والطور والمدينة. He cannot enter Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. He cannot enter Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Palestine. He cannot enter a masjid in Tur, which is somewhere in the Middle East around the area of Egypt. And he cannot enter the masjid in al Madinah, the Prophet's masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this narration mentions four masajid. The previous narration mentioned two cities. The previous narration mentioned two cities. You also have it reported in Bukhari and Muslim. On the authority of Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet wasallam said, there is no land except that the Dajjal will enter that land except Mecca and Medina. Then the Prophet ﷺ gave details that was not in the previous narration. He said, لَيْسَ لَهُ مِن نَقَابِهَا نُقْبٌ إِلَّا عَلَيْهِ الْمَلَائِكَ صَافِينَ يَحْرِسُونَهَا Then the Prophet ﷺ said about these two cities, there is no corner of these cities except there are angels in rows Guarding these cities, except that there are angels in rows guarding these cities to the end of that hadith. So the Dajjal cannot enter Mecca or Medina and those four masjids like we mentioned. His followers. From the followers of the Dajjal, that have been mentioned in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Jews, and more specifically, the Jews of Asbahan. And Asbahan is currently in Iran. And before we read the narration, yes, you can search for it. There are Jews, there's a, there are more, the population, Afwan, the population of Iran more than 50% of them are Jews. More than, as of today, more than 50% of Iranians are Jews. Look at what the Prophet ﷺ said. In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, that the Prophet ﷺ said, يَتْبَعُ الدَّجَّالِ مِنْ يَحُودِ أَسْبَهَان سَبْعُونَ ألف عَلَيْهِمَ الطَّيَالِسَةِ the Prophet ﷺ said, the Dajjal will be fo- from his followers will be followed by 70,000 Jews from Asbahan, from Iran. And they wear at Tayalisa. At Tayalisa is a white cloak. It's a white cloak that they wear over their heads. And they still wear it till this day. And they still wear it to this day. It has. Uh, It's a woven cloak that they wear over their head, especially when they're praying. So that's one group of his followers, the Jews. Another group of his followers, the Turks and the non-Arabs. It's reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. On the authority of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, that the Dajjal will appear, the Dajjal will appear in the east from an area which is called Khurasan. 
And Khurasan is an area of South Russia. You have those countries that are in South Russia. And from those countries, you have Iran. North of Iran, you have this area. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, He will be followed by individuals. Their faces are like al-mujan al-mutraqa, beaten shields, flat faces. And that's that area that you have uh, north of Afghanistan, south of Russia. You have that area. Individuals will be following the Dajjal. Likewise, another group of his followers, the women. It's reported in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood with his companions one day and he said ni'matul ard al-madina how wonderful al-madina is idha kharaja ad-dajjal kana ala kulli naqab min anqabiha malak when the dajjal appears there will be an angel at every corner he will not enter this city. So the Prophet ﷺ is in Medina. And he's speaking to the Sahaba. And he said, this is a wonderful city. This is a wonderful land. Every corner of this city has angels which are protecting it. The Dajjal would not enter. فَإِذَا كَانَ كذلك, While those angels are on guard. رَجَفَتَ الْمَدِينَةُ بِأَهْلِهَا <coughs> the Prophet ﷺ said, while the angels are on guard, there will be three earthquakes in Medina. There will be three earthquakes in Medina. There will not be a hypocrite, a man or a woman, a male hypocrite. Or a female hypocrite who dwells in Medina, except when those earthquakes take place, they will leave and join the Dajjal. They will leave and join the Dajjal. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَكْثَرُ مَنْ يَخْرُجُ إِلَيْهِ النِّسَاء And the majority or the abundant of people that will leave and join him are the women. Are the women. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this is the, the day of purification. Yani, purifying Medina. So you have hypocrites that live in Medina and dwell in Medina. You have hypocrites that live and dwell in Medina. So the Dajjal, and he knows that he can't enter Medina. But he will still try to go to Medina. And he's blocked. So he waits on the outskirts. He doesn't just approach Medina and say, oh, I can't enter. So he goes back and goes to other places. No, he waits. And it's reported in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed that he actually hits the ground. Look at that, subhanAllah. It's reported in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed that he strikes the ground and then the earthquakes, the earthquakes take place and the hypocrites leave and they join him. They leave and they join him. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَذَلِكَ يَوْمٍ الْمَدِينَةُ الْخَبَثِ This is the day that Medina will get rid of the bad people, the bad individuals, individuals who have hypocrisy, individuals who love evil, that would be the day that they leave al Medina. That would be the day that they leave al Medina. It's mentioned by Hafiz ibn Kathir, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, in his Al Bidai wa Nihaya. Hafiz ibn Kathir mentions in Al Bidai wa Nihaya, and we'll summarize it because it's long. He said that the Dajjal would appear 
And by the way, this is another issue. There was a narration that said that the Dajjal would appear between Iraq and Syria. And then you have the narration that says that the Dajjal would appear in Asbahan. The scholars reconcile between that by saying he comes out. He comes out in the area between Iraq and Syria. But he begins his mission in the area of Asbahan. He begins his mission in the area of Asbahan. In an area that is called al yahudiya And that area is in Iran. Ibn Kathir said, he is supported by 70,000 Jews. And they have their weapons. And they have these cloaks. And to this day, they wear these cloaks at Tayalisa. They wear these cloaks. Then Ibn Kathir said, he will be supported by the Turks. He will be supported by the people from Khurasan. Then Ibn Kathir said, he will first appear as a king. He will first appear as a king. Then he will claim to be a prophet. Then he will claim to be a lord. He would claim to be Allah. So ignorant people will believe in him and follow him. And he will be opposed by the individuals who Allah Azza has guided. And the people of certainty. He will continue to go throughout the earth. Baladan, Baladan. Country after country. Wahisnan, Hisnan. Fort after fort. Every place. Wahikleeman, Ikleeman. Every small or large society. Every village. Every city. He will go throughout. He will not leave any city. Except that he will walk through it with his army and his feet. Then Ibn Kathir says, except Mecca and Medina. Ibn Kathir continues to say, his time on earth is 40 days, a day like a year, and a day like a month, and a day like a Friday, like a week. That's what he means when he says, he means a week. So one day is like, one day is like a year. One day is like a month. And one day is like a week. Then the rest of the days are normal days. What is that calculation? Ibn Kathir says it. The calculation for it is one year, two months, and a half. One year, two months, and a half. Then Ibn Kathir says, وَقَدْ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ عَلَى يَدِهِ خَوَارِكَ كَثِيرًا Allah has created many miraculous on more or never unprecedented actions so that he can guide the people astray. So that he can guide the people astray. To the end of what Ibn Kathir mentioned. cutting through some of it how does an individual protect themselves from the Dajjal how does an individual protect himself from the Dajjal it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari on the authority of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or she said Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to supplicate in his prayer, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min athab al-qabri wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal wa a'udhu bika min fitnat al-mahya wa fitnat al-mamat Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'tham wal-maghram 
The Prophet وسلم, used to say in his prayer, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave. And I seek refuge in you from the fitna of the Messiah Dajjal. And I seek refuge in you from life, yani the trials and the tribulations of life. And I seek refuge in you from the trials and the tribulations of death. So the Prophet وسلم, used to seek refuge in the Dajjal and he used to teach it to the Sahaba. It's also mentioned in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet وسلم, said if one of you does tashahud and this informs you when you seek refuge in the Dajjal you do it at the end of the prayer. The Prophet وسلم, said if one of you makes tashahud at the end of the prayer فَلْيَسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ arba. Let him seek refuge in Allah from four. O oh Allah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'adhabi jahannam. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave. وَمِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ And from the pun... Afwan, Afwan. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire. And I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave. وَمِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَا mamat, And I seek refuge in you from the fitna of living and dying. And I seek refuge in you from the fitna of al-Masih al-Dajjal. And that's reported in Sahih Muslim. And here, the Prophet wasallam said, مِنْ Fitnati Jahannam, I seek refuge in you from the hellfire, which is an explanation of the previous narration. So the Prophet used to seek refuge in Allah from the hellfire, and refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave, and refuge in Allah from living and dying, the trials of living and dying, and refuge in Allah from the fitna of the Dajjal. It's furthermore reported in Sahih Muslim. On the authority of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said, and it shows you how diligent the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was in teaching the Sahaba. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, said, Kana yu'allimuhum hadha dua kama yu'allimuhum surata min al-Qur'an. The Prophet used to teach us this dua just like he used to teach us a surah from the Quran. And you can understand that, how the Prophet ﷺ used to sit down with the Sahaba and teach them the Quran, review the Quran, read the Quran, correct them. He used to teach them this dua the same way. He used to teach them this dua the same way. The Prophet ﷺ used to teach them, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam. Oh Allah. We seek refuge in you from the punishment of the hellfire. وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ And the punishment of the grave. وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَسِيحِ الدَّجَّالِ And the punish and the fitna of the Dajjal and the fitna of living and dying to the end of that hadith. To show you how the Salaf viewed this is mentioned Imam Muslim Imam Muslim mentioned on the authority of Tawus bin Kaysan, one of the Salaf, and his one of his teachers, or the, the narrators of Hadith, that Tawus ibn Kaysan, and you find Tawus in the books of Hadith, and Imam Muslim mentioned that Tawus, that Tawus taught this dua to his son. Tawus taught this dua to his son. And his son prayed. After he prayed, Tawus said to his son, Did you say the dua that I taught you? Did you say the dua that I taught you? His son said, No. He said, Repeat your prayer. Repeat your prayer. 
يعني the salaf رحمه الله تعالى was so careful to make sure they teach it to their family members and to their children to their family members and to their children that he made his son repeat it another example in Sahih al-Bukhari it's mentioned that Mus'ab bin Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas the son of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas who is uh, one of the companions and one of the Ashra Mubashirin bil Jannah Yani Mus'ab is his son. He said that Sa'ad, our father, used to teach it to us. He used to teach us this dua. And he used to inform us that the Prophet taught it to them. And he ordered us to say it. And he ordered us to say it. The same dua. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of the grave until the end of the dua. Till the end of the dua. As it relates to seeking refuge, it was mentioned by Imam Al-Ajurri. In his book that we mentioned yesterday, Imam Al-Ajurri has a book in Aqeedah. What is it called? Al-Shari'a. Barakallahu feekum. Imam Al-Ajurri died 360. Imam Al-Ajurri died 360. In his book, Al-Shari'a, he said, Bab isti'adhat al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min fitnat al-Dajjal wa ta'alimihi li ummatihi an yasta'idhu billahi min fitnat al-Dajjal. Imam al-Ajurri said, chapter, yani he gave it a chapter title. He said, the chapter, the Prophet seeking refuge in Allah from the Dajjal. And teaching it to his ummah. And teaching it to his ummah. That's the chapter title. The Prophet wasallam seeking refuge from the Dajjal and teaching it to his ummah. Then, then Imam Allahu al- Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Naam. Imam al-Ajurri, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, al-Shari'a, he mentioned the chapter, the chapter of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa seeking refuge in Allah from the Dajjal and teaching it to his ummah. And teaching it to his ummah. Then Imam al-Ajurri mentioned several narrations where the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa used to. Then Imam al-Ajurri mentioned several narrations where the Prophet wasallam used to teach it to his ummah. Then, then Imam al-Ajurri said, then he said, this is the statement of Imam al-Ajurri from 360. 360. He said, فَيَنْبَغِي لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ أَنْ يَسْتَعِيذُ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ مِنْهُ And I will translate it directly. He said, so it is incumbent, Imam al-Ajurri, he said, so it is incumbent upon the Muslims to seek refuge in Allah from the Dajjal. It is incumbent upon the Muslims to seek refuge in Allah from the Dajjal. Because the Prophet used to warn his ummah from him in many narrations. And the Prophet described him for his ummah. So it is incumbent. Notice he says it again. So it is incumbent upon the Muslims to be cautious of him and to seek refuge in Allah from him and the time that he appears in. From him and the time that he appears in. From him and the time that he appears in. Because the time that he appears in will be a very difficult time. May Allah protect us and you from him. That's the dua, that's the statement of Imam al ajurri and his dua. Another thing that protects a Muslim from the Dajjal, to memorize verses from Surat Al-Kahf. To memorize verses from Surat Al-Kahf. It's mentioned in Sahih Muslim. In the hadith of Nawas bin Sam'an, that the Prophet said in the hadith, so whoever meets the Dajjal, let him recite 
the opening verses of Surat Al-Kaf. Let him recite the opening verses of Surat Al-Kaf. It's also mentioned in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Darda, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever memorizes 10 verses from the opening verses of Surat Al-Kaf, he will be protected from the Dajjal. He will be protected from the Dajjal. So that's another thing that protects the believers from the Dajjal is memorizing verses from Surat Al-Kaf. Another thing is that a person, no matter what, he stays away from him. A person, no matter what, he stays away from him. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is a fitna of t- this time. The fitna of this time, people following influencers, and I just got to see him. I know he's a liar, but I just want to see him once. That's today, influencers. That people who are nobodies can open an account on Twitter or Facebook, Instagram, and do stupid stuff. And in two weeks, they have a million followers. Two weeks, a million followers doing nothing. Nothing. I just got to see him. Right? The Prophet says, as is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, in the Sunan of Abi Dawood and others, and declared authentic by Shaykh al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever hears about the Dajjal, stay away from him. Whoever hears about the Dajjal, stay away from him. For verily a man, for verily a man will approach him, and the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about a believer, will approach him, and before you know it, the individual follows him. Before you know it, the individual follows him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, بِمَا يَبْعَثُ بِهِ مِنَ الشُّبُهَاد Because of his doubts. Because of his doubts. And recall, my brothers and sisters, and he, there will be an individual that approaches him and disbelieves in him. And we mentioned the narration yesterday. Disbelieves. He disbelieves in him. And the Dajjal would say, what about if I bring your parents back to life? What about if I bring your parents back to life? And then two shayateen come, one in the form of his mother, one comes in the form of his father, and say to him, you should believe in this man. He is God. Look at that fitna. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, individual, if you hear about him, stay away from him. If you hear about him, then stay away from him. Likewise, another thing that saves a person from the Dajjal and it's preceded to live in one of two cities and they were Mecca and Medina. They were in Mecca and Medina because of the hadith of Amran bin Hussein that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam afwan the hadith the hadith of Abu Huraira afwan the hadith of Abu Huraira where the Prophet Wasallam said, there are angels at the corners of these cities. There are angels at the corners of these cities. And likewise, the hadith of Abi Bakara, the hadith of Abu Bakara, Nufay bin Harif, in Sahil Bukhari, that the Prophet Wasallam said, that the Dajjal would not be able to enter Al-Madina. That the Dajjal would not be able to enter Al-Madina. Another thing that saves a person from the Dajjal, having knowledge of your religion. Having knowledge of your religion. And from that is the previous hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Abdullah bin Umar in Bukhari and Muslim. And we mentioned it yesterday. Where the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, I'm going to say something, I'm going to describe him like no other Prophet has described him. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Ta'lamuna annahu a'war. 
وَإِنَّ رَبَّكُمْ لَيْسَ بِأَعْوَرْ You know that the Dajjal is blind and your Lord is not. So the Prophet ﷺ said, you know. The Prophet ﷺ said, you know. Likewise, in that same narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, تَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ لَنْ يَرَى أَحَدٌ مِنْكُمْ رَبَّهُ حَتَّى يَمُوتُ You know that no one will see his Lord until... Until he dies. Right? No one will see his Lord until he dies. So the Prophet said, you know twice to his Sahaba. Which means they have what? They have knowledge. Imam Ibn Hajr, Hafiz Ibn Hajr, in Fatul Bari, he said, this is an indication that the Dajjal is a liar claiming to be God, claiming to be Allah. He is a liar. But he's claiming to be Allah. Because, notice this, this fiqh of Ibn Hajr. And he's basing it off of that narration where the Prophet said, You will not meet your you will not see your Lord until you die. Remember that. You will not see your Lord until you die. Hafiz Ibn Hajr said, This is proof that he's a liar claiming to be. God because the only time you can see Allah is when when you die but the Dajjal is going around earth and can people see him yes so when individuals see him they should realize you can't be God because I will not see Allah until I die you get the point so Ibn Hajjur is saying this is a proof that he's a liar and this makes the believer firm because when you hear about him or you see him, you know that you haven't died yet. And in order for you to see Allah, you have to die. So this is further proof that he is a liar. It's further proof that he's a liar and further proof that we have to have knowledge. It was mentioned by Imam Safarini in his Lawami Al-Anwar al Bahiya. One of the books of the Salaf, and he died 1188, talking about 300 years ago, around that time. Imam al Safarina said, he said, the chapter, look, notice this book of Aqidah. He said, the chapter, it is befitting and incumbent to spread the ahadith about the Dajjal, to spread it, to let it be known amongst the people. And under that chapter, Imam al-Safarini says, and we'll translate it directly. He said, it is incumbent upon all people of knowledge to spread the narrations about the Dajjal amongst their children, amongst their women, amongst the men. Notice, he said, it's incumbent upon the people of knowledge to spread the narrations about the Dajjal amongst the children, amongst the women, amongst the men. And then he said that one of the Salaf said, even the people who teach the children should teach the children about the Dajjal. Even the people who teach the children, and it's possible. And this is a fact because you get some parents that said, no, they're too young for that. You get some parents, they say, no, they're too young for that. It would scare them or the likes. So if you said they're too young for that, yani is what about the fact that the Prophet used to teach it to the Sahaba, whether they were young or old? Anas ibn Malik, was he an old Sahabi? He was young. Abdullah ibn Umar, was he young or old? Young. Abdullah ibn Abbas, young or old? Young. These are all young Sahaba. Aisha. And notice I said Abdullah bin Umar. And he was one of the narrators of the hadith of the Dajjal. Aisha, she was one of the narrators. Ibn Abbas, one of the narrators. Ali, Ibn, one of the narrators. And all of them were young. All of them were young. Another problem with that statement of the parent. Another problem with that statement of the parent. My child is too young. I don't want to scare them. What guarantees that you will live to see them grow up? When did Allah inform you that you will be alive to teach them when they get older? So you think they're five, 
they're six, they're seven. I'll wait until they turn a teenager. What guarantees that you're going to see them turn 10 years old or 15 years old? So that is a mistake. That is a mistake. So Imam Safarini concluded by saying, so it is incumbent upon the people of knowledge, especially during our time, the time that the fitna has become widespread and the trials have become widespread and the religion is becoming vague and the sunnah is becoming an innovation. Notice what he's mentioning. And how long did he die? How long ago did he die? About 300 years ago. Imam al Safarini, died 1188. We are currently in 1445. Currently in 1445, close to 300 years ago. So he said it's incumbent to teach about the Dajjal because we are in times of fitna, tribulations. The religion is becoming weak. The sunnah is becoming innovation. He concluded by saying that. How much time do we have? Well, do you, they have to call it now? Okay, time. Now, as it relates to, because of the time, the destruction of the Dajjal. The destruction of the Dajjal. In summary, the Dajjal will be killed at the hands of Isa ibn Maryam. Alayhi salat was salam. Alayhi salat was salam. As is reported in Sahih Muslim. On the authority of Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. The Dajjal will appear in my ummah. And he would live for 40 days. And at the end of that hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Then Allah will send Isa ibn Maryam, and he will seek the Dajjal and kill him. It's also reported in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Nawaz bin Sam'an, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And at the end of that hadith, he mentions that Allah Azawajal will send Isa, and Isa والسلام, will search for the, for the Dajjal, and he will find him at a place in Palestine and he will kill him. And he will kill him. It's also reported in the Muslim Imam Ahmed that the Prophet وسلم, said, Yaqtulu ibn Maryam at Dajjal bi babi lud. That Isa ibn Maryam will kill the Dajjal at the area of Lud, at the entrance of that city. At the entrance of that city. We will close with the statements of Sheikh Nasruddin al-Albani rahmatullahi alayhi when he was asked about the Dajjal. So I hope I have two minutes. Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. Very important and relevant statement by Sheikh al-Albani. And Sheikh al-Albani died 24 years ago. Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala died 24 years ago. Sheikh al-Albani said, it is known that Isa will descend in Damascus, and he will pray behind the Mahdi. And this means that Isa والسلام, will be followed by believers in Al Bayt al Maqdis, which is where? Palestine. He will be followed by the believers of Palestine. And the Dajjal will be followed by the Jews from Asbahan, yani from Iran. The Dajjal will be followed by the Jews from Iran. So notice what Sheikh Al-Bani is saying. Isa, Isa will be supported by the believers, and more specifically, the believers in Palestine. And the Dajjal would be supported by the Jews from Iran. Then Sheikh Al-Bani says, so this is an indication that the Jews no longer will control Palestine. This is an indication that the Jews will no longer control Palestine. Or the least that can be said, this is Sheikh Al-Bani, the least that can be said is they do not govern Beit al-Maqdis. Then he said, then Imam Nasruddin al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, he said, but 
the present state of affairs of the Muslims, and he died 24 years ago, does not indicate that the Muslims are ready to follow Isa nor the Mahdi. Notice what he says. Because of the weakness of the Muslims. Because of the weakness of the Muslims. What does he say? It does not indicate that the Muslims are ready. Because they are far from the things that prepare them to follow Isa and, and the Mahdi. They are far from that. Then he says, Because they have not supported Allah. They have not. They have not. They have not. Practice their religion to the extent that Allah will help them. Allah says in the Quran, In Tansurullah, Yansurukum. You help Allah, Allah helps you. Right? Meaning, you obey Allah, Allah will help you. So Shaykh al Bani said, So they have not done their part. They have not done their part. Then Shaykh al Bani said, Falabud lahum min al ruju ila dinihim. لِيَرْفَعُوا الظُّلْ عَنْهُمْ كَمَا وَعْدَهُمْ بِذَلِكْ نَبِيُّهُمْ مُحَمَّدْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, so it is upon them to return to their religion so that the humiliation can be lifted from them as they have been promised by their Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So that when the Mahdi comes and when the Isa descends, they will find the Muslims ready to be followers. They will find the Muslims ready to be followers to the might and the glory that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised them in this life and the next. My dear brothers and sisters, may Allah Azza wa Jal guide us all. May Allah forgive us. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from amongst those who are ready and capable of following Isa and and the Mahdi, may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings and our faults. Allah knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslim kathira.